In this tutorial, we're going to be using text, shapes, colors, and texture to create a well-rounded design that stands out from the crowd. If you haven't already, please watch the previous videos on my channel as they go through each of these skills individually. Also, make sure you download the two free files from the links in the description below. You will need them to follow along. But before we begin, please subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you. Okay, first off, let's create a new project. Come over to Create New. Um, we're gonna be using the March by Amazon default dimensions. Uh, make sure this is set to pixels. Width will be 4,500, height 5,400, orientation vertical. We're gonna be using artboard, so make sure that's checked. Resolution set to 300. Color mode will be RGB. Background contents is transparent. And go ahead and hit create new. Now first off, we want to uh, do a few things here just to make sure that you're on the same page as I am. So uh, come over to Window, scroll down to Character, make sure that that's checked, and it'll bring up this Character panel. Now, for a portion of this, we're going to be using this Hucklebuck font, which is an Adobe font. It's free. So to find that, what you want to do is come over here to where it says More from Adobe Fonts. Click on that. It'll bring up... There you go. It'll bring up uh, Adobe Fonts in your browser. And then you just want to come up here and type in, there you go. Go ahead and click on Hucklebuck JF. And down here, I have it activated already, but down here it will say activate font. Go ahead and click that. Now it takes a few seconds for it to load onto your Photoshop, but it will be there. Go ahead and minimize that. And then we want to come to the shape tool here, right click. Go down to Custom Shape Tool, and this little window pops up. Go ahead and click there. Click the gear icon. Click Import Shapes. Now, if you've downloaded the file from the link in the description, then you'll have this Untitled Custom Shapes CSH file. You'll want to click on that, and then it will load the shapes that uh, I'm giving you here. You'll, you'll see it, and we'll be using them a little bit later in the design. Um, once you have all that done, go ahead, just click up here on the toolbar, it gets rid of that. Okay, so we're gonna be making a white design for dark colored shirts. So typically I like to create a dark background for us to work on. So with layer one selected, we can go ahead and name it background. There we go. I have caps locks on. Um, Come up to the shape tool, right click, select the rectangle tool. Now, once you do that, uh, this toolbar will change with all, all of the um, parameters you need for the shape tool. Let's go ahead and select fill, make sure that it's black. Stroke, make sure that it's crossed out. Go ahead and click on the toolbar to get rid of that. Um, come up to the top with your cursor, click, hold down, and drag down to the bottom right hand corner, let go. Now we have a black background to work off of. Well, it didn't do the, on top of that. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the trash. Uh, let's go ahead and name this background. There we go. Um, it didn't put the rectangle on that layer because I started the rectangle outside of the artboard, so it automatically made a new layer. If I had started it inside the artboard and then sized it to fit, it should have, um, gone ahead and made it on that same layer, but it doesn't really matter. So uh, first off, we're going to be doing um, just some lines of text, and to do that, let's create a new layer here. Come up to the text tool, come over to the character panel, and again, if you don't have it, just go to Windows, scroll down to Character, make sure it's checked, it'll pop up. Uh, I want to use Impact for the main font just because it's a nice big display bold font that most people have. I think it actually comes um, standard with Photoshop, so you should have it. Again, make sure you have caps locks on. Um, go ahead and click here on these two squares. What that will do is it will reset the foreground and background colors to true black and true white. 
Once you've done that, go ahead and switch that, and that'll make the foreground color, the color that we're using, true white. Um, come up to the top here, make sure you have center text selected. Let's go ahead and just start out with uh, you know, a, around 159 points for your text. Um, impact regular is fine. Come towards the middle of the artboard here, and just click, and then let's just start typing. There we go. Now we have one. Now mouse over here to the move tool. Once you've done that, what, what it did was it just kind of made this text not live. So if, it, if we're typing on the keyboard, we're not gonna end up you know, misspelling something. But also what that did is it gave us the move tool and, and we're able to grab this and move it around. Um, and, and the reason I'm able to just grab this is because I have auto select selected. I always have this selected it makes it easier to move between layers without having to come over to the layer panel and individually choose them. So go ahead and make sure you have auto select selected. Show transform controls, sure. It doesn't bother me. Sometimes it does bother me when you have small items that you're trying to size correctly. It's a little tough, but you can always turn that off so you can see what it actually looks like. We're gonna make some copies of this so we can just use this line of text for our other lines of text that we have coming below. It's very easy to do, so just kind of mouse over this, hold down Alt, drag, so Legends, R, and then just while holding Alt, just let's drag it out again. Born in, and let go. Uh, holding Alt, drag again, March. Okay, so let's just start here at the bottom, March. Double click on this little T icon there, it'll turn that live. Let's just type in March, and then come down to the the one right below it, double click on that, and type in born in, there you go. Now this one's a little bit different, so I'm gonna double click on this to make this live, come up to the character panel, and then you wanna type in, there you go, H-U-C-K, and you'll find Hucklebuck. Now we need to retype this, but not in caps, so turn off caps lock, and then just type in R, there you go. Hit the move tool so you can move it around and then there we go we have them all typed out it was very quick and now you could you know very easily center all this stuff resize it and then have your own design um, but what we want to do is we want to add some graphic elements and some textures and we're also going to be doing some coloring too it makes it stand out from other shirts on you know merch by amazon or other platforms first off let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and resize most of this all together. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna highlight this March layer up here and then I'll scroll down to Legends and then hold down Shift and then click the Legends and then now I got transform tools that um, span all of these lines of text so we can just drag them out. Uh, hold down Alt so it expands from the center. Something like that, that'll work. Let go of Alt, mouse over to any one of these and then just drag it down. Bring it close to the bottom, we're going to be adding a crown up here, so we need some space. Once you've done that, just hit enter. And then now let's go in and uh, just kind of freehand drag these things around. I'll move this up because I'm going to make this march a little bigger. Double click on that so we can just use the slide to increase the size. If you don't click on it, it makes it a lot less... Um, smooth what you'll see here I, I won't double click on it like that let's go ahead and just turn that off and then with this selected if we use the um, the point slide it it's it doesn't work as smoothly for some reason but easily to get past that we can just highlight it and then you can really kind of see how nice and smooth it works there I want March to be bigger just because I, I want it to be emphasized in the design. So there we go, kind of like that. Now R, I guess we can move that down a little bit. It's pretty, maybe a little tight there. Uh, Legends, let's move this. So there we go. Let's move that down a little bit. Give it some space to breathe there. Something like that. Okay, now I want to go through each one of these and make sure that it's centered on the artboard. So just with uh, Legends selected, come up to the top. Make sure you have the Move tool selected as well. Come up to the top to the Line tool. Click this button there. That'll center it. Now just 
Click on the next one, R. There you go. Click on the next one and make sure you have to have auto select for this to work. If not, you have to come over here and select it on the side. Um, born in, go ahead and click on that. That'll work. March, go ahead, click on that. There we go. Now all of these are center aligned. Now the, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have the space in between these lines of text. We want to make sure that these are all the same. Now you can do it with just dragging and you know if I drag this around sometimes you'll see these little 106 and see it says 106 pixels. You can do that if you need to get really specific but I don't think that we do. Um, need to get so specific that so we can use the align tool and it's I think it's vertical distribute spacing and distribute spacing vertically will even out all the spaces in between um, automatically. So how to do that is go ahead and select this top layer, mouse over the bottom layer, hold down shift and click. Now they're all selected and then once you do that these three dots pop up and then see this is not, I mean, this is now highlighted so we can hit distribute spacing, distribute vertically and boom you can see they moved to the position that there's that they need to be in for the spaces in between to all be the same. Okay, so one thing I want to do now is since we have these sized and we're not going to be resizing or you know upsizing, downsizing, I'm gonna go ahead and rasterize these so they're easier to work with. So highlight this layer, right click, scroll up to rasterize type. There we go. Do the same here, rasterize type. Do the same here, rasterize type. Do the same here and rasterize type. So now all of these are rasterized. Let's start by putting the crown up here, up top. And it's pretty simple to do. Just highlight March here. Let's go ahead and add a new layer. We'll be working above it. Come over to the shape tool, right click, scroll down to custom shape tool. Now you'll see the toolbar changes and you have this little window. Go ahead and click the down arrow and you should see something like this. If not, remember you need to go over and import shapes and um, probably what you'll see is you'll see something like this and just click this down arrow and this whole window will show up with, you know, oops, I, don't, I don't even know how many shapes it is. It's a lot, but we're gonna be using this crown right there. So highlight that. Go ahead and click up here on the toolbar to get rid of the window. Again, let's make sure that fill is set to white. Stroke is turned off. Click on the toolbar to get rid of, rid of that window. Mouse over here. Hold down shift so it constrains properly. If you don't hold down shift, it's going to allow you to, you know, really kind of make it off balance. Uh, let's eyeball this. I'm thinking that's pretty good. Let it go. Now select the move tool. And again, with auto select selected, you can come over here and grab this. Look at that. You see the toolbar. I mean, not the toolbar. The guides went ahead and showed us that this was all correctly spaced in between with 143 pixels. Um, let's move up to the top here and center it. Yeah, it's quite a bit off center. Let me see what that looks like. I guess that's okay. Yeah. I, I was wondering if maybe this gap was a little bit too big, but I think that's pretty good. Um, and now next what I want to do is I want to add some elements that run across here. Typically I would do like kind of a spear shape, but I think on this one, um, since everything is so blocky and sharp edges, I'm gonna do some long, thin rectangles here and then make this R appear like it's floating above it. And it's pretty easy to do. So click, click on the R layer here, hold down control, hit J. Now move this all the way up to the top. Scroll down to the effects panel here. Click that, hit stroke, the effects panel will pop up and what you want to do is you want to make set this to outside, blend mode normal, opacity 100%, um, overprint, um, you don't want really to use it, fill type color, yes, click on the color thing, drag it all the way down to the bottom corner. Uh, you can also select the background because what we want is we want it the same color as the background color. Um, click OK, OK. Now you can't see it, but you'll be able to see it in a little bit. Click there to highlight the crown 41 layer and then come down here and click the add layer in between um, the crown 41 and our copy. 
because we want the, our copy above what we're going to be creating now. Uh, now, come over to the shape tool, right click, select the rectangle tool. Again, make sure we have fill set to white. Stroke is off. Click on the toolbar to get rid of that window. Now come over here to the left hand side, click and then scroll down slightly and then drag out something like this. And I want to give something about that thick, let's say. There we go. Not bad. Now I want to make, uh, let's say probably four copies of this or three copies actually, so we have four. So with the move tool selected and auto select on, hold down alt and then just drag. There we go. Let go of the, the mouse and you've created a new one. Let's do another one. Just while holding down alt, click and drag and let go. There you go. Let's do one more. Hold down alt, click, drag and let go. There you go. Now, first before we go too far, let's go ahead and make sure that these are all centered. With uh, this layer selected, go ahead, come up to the top on the align tool, click the center button. Let's go ahead and choose this one. There you go. Choose that one. There you go. Choose that one. Click too many times. There you go. Now we want to distribute the spacing in between them. So we've done that before. And how we do that is with the bottom rectangle selected there. Hold down shift, mouse over the top rectangle, click. Now they're all selected. Come up to the align tool, press these three dots. Distribute vertically. There you go. Now the space in between all of these is exactly the same. Now with all of these still selected, come over here and click the create new group button there. Click it. Now all of our rectangles have been placed into this group. Again, what I want to do is I want to merge this group together to where they become all one layer. So right click on this group, merge group. There you go. And since we've merged them together, it also rasterized them. So it, it made it to where we can actually erase portions of these. And you'll, you'll see in just a second. Since we're going to be using the R layer and these rectangle layers together, I want to make sure that these are vertically aligned to each other, not the artboard. I, I want the space from the bottom of this rectangle to the bottom of this text to be the same as the top of this rectangle to the top of this text. And how do you do that is um, just like what we did before, but um, we need to choose these two. So make sure our copy is highlighted. Hold down shift, click on this group copy, come up here to the, I think it's aligned vertical centers. Yeah, there you go. You click that. Now what that did is it aligned vertically to each other, not the artboard. Um, so it should be perfectly set. Okay, so now you can see that we have two copies of R, one without a stroke like this one down here, and one with a stroke like this one here. With this stroke applied, we want to right click on this copy, come up to rasterize layer style. Okay. Once that's done, what we want to do is mouse over this little corner here, hold down control, and you'll see that little box pop up. Once that box pops up and we click, what it's going to do is it's going to select this entire layer or the outline of this entire layer. Now, if we didn't rasterize it, it would select inside the stroke, which is not what we want. We want to select the stroke. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use this basically as a punch to, to erase portions of these rectangles down here. And to do that, with this selected, and you see these little marching ants running around, you want to mouse over to group one, select that, and then just hit delete. Now to deselect this selection, go ahead and hit control and D together. That deselects it. And now I can turn this layer off completely. Just click that layer visibility. It looks like nothing happened, but actually what happened is we've erased it. If, if, if we turn off this visibility, you'll see, there you go. It's been erased. Um, another way to clean this up, make it easier to read is I want to get rid of these little lines in between and, and there. And since this is already rasterized, it'll be very easy. Um, make sure you have group one select. Let's go ahead and first off, let's throw this in the trash. There you go. Make sure you have group one selected. Come over to the eraser tool. If you don't have it there, 
right click and then click the eraser tool and you'll have this cursor show up. You can change the size using the bracket tools up and down. I think this is pretty good. Something like that. And you just mouse over what you want to erase. With the correct layer selected, you don't want to do it on top of this bar because you'll end up erasing the uh, text. We don't want that. We want to erase these rectangles here. So with group one selected, go ahead and hit that. Hit that, hit that, that, that. You can do it all in one motion too by holding down the mouse button. There you go. Okay, now that we have all the elements done, let's go ahead and add some color. And to do that, we want to make sure that everything is rasterized, which it should already be. All right, click, oh, we can rasterize that layer. There we go. Rasterize, 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 and rasterize. Okay, now um, let's start with the crown. Go ahead and highlight crown. We'll just go from the top to the bottom come over to swatch I'm gonna use this yellow color if you can double click and choose your own yellow that you want or whatever color you want it doesn't have to be yellow and then come up to the bucket tool if you don't have the bucket tool selected right click over here on gradient tool or um, paint bucket 3d material drop tool and just click on bucket and it's pretty simple as long as you have the correct layer selected, you can just mouse over it and then click and it'll add the color to it. I'm going to do kind of a light gray on this Legends here, so I already have one here that I've chosen. All I have to do is just select it with the eyedropper tool, come down to the corresponding layer and select it. There you go. I think I'm going to make these red. Why not? Here we go. Um, this is group one. I'll be doing this, 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 this one. There we go. Now March. I want. I think maybe we'll go ahead and balance the legends color also with this March maybe. So let's just choose March and go back to the swatch and choose the same gray. And. What about born in? Maybe a blue. Let's try a blue. Okay, now select the born in layer, hit blue. This one, maybe that'll be yellow, huh? Let's see what it looks like. So choose the R layer, click that. Okay, that's fine. We'll use that. Okay, now that we have color, let's go ahead and add some texture to this. What you want to do is um, download the texture file from the link in the description below, open it up, and you'll get a window that kind of looks like this. Now just click over here on the side, highlight and drag these just to the center. You have to enter them one at a time, so hit enter, 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 Enter. Okay. Now find out where you put them. I guess dirt grunge texture there. I like the last one. Let's go ahead and drag them up to the top here. There we go. I'm going to turn off visibility on all of these because we don't really need to see them. First off, let's go ahead and add a, a texture kind of throughout, I guess. Uh, I, I want to put it on the crown and maybe um, these bars there and a, a really neat texture to do that on elements like this it's, it's kind of soft it's called a real fabric texture you don't have to have the visibility on to do it mouse over this corner hold down control and click and it's you can see what it's done it's selected everything inside of that layer now scroll down to the crown I like that just hit delete Scroll to group one, highlight that one, hit delete. Now deselect the layer, control D, there you go. And you can see we've added a really cool kind of fabric-y texture to these two elements. Um, now legends, I wanna, I wanna get pretty aggressive in the texture with this legends. So I'm gonna use this vintage lines grunge texture. Um, doing the same thing, hold down control, mouse over the corner to where that little box pops up, you see. 
there it pops up click on that and it's highlighted everything on this layer as well scroll down to legends hit delete uh, press Control d to deselect and you can see the texture that's given us it's really really cool um for march let's use this dirt grunge texture yeah uh, again, so hold down control, mouse over that to the box pops up, click, we've selected it. Scroll down to March, highlight that, hit delete, uh, control D to deselect. Really, really cool. Um, what else do we got here? We got R and born in. Let's do the scratch. Why not? Uh, control. Click. Uh, highlight R, hit delete, and then highlight born in and hit delete as well. Deselect control D. There you go. So obviously you can use one style of texture on an entire design, um, which is actually the norm, but doing this adds a, a little bit more flavor to your shirt and uh, just kind of makes it stand out a little bit more. Now you can go crazy, you know, with this sort of stuff and just texture it and adding shapes and all different sorts of things. I'm just trying to give you a quick, simple way of creating a shirt that stands out. And I think this one does. Well, that's it for this one. If you found this useful and informative, please click subscribe and go ahead and click the like button. And if you have any questions, tips, comments, or stuff that you would like to see me do in future videos, please leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.